Welcome back. I'm Kim Bailey. She's Fuliana Osborne and this is Inside Exec. Today we have a guest with us, Jamie Wadley. Jamie is going to talk to us about being an entrepreneur and what that sort of lifestyle entails. As an introduction, I will tell you that Jamie and I have worked in conjunction for some considerable time across a broad range of industries. We first worked together in the construction industry. Jamie has done a fair bit of consulting with construction companies, but also a broad range of other organisations and industries. In his background with IT, he moved on from IT to some associated things. He's done finance and been, again, consulting as well as running businesses of his own. He was a very early adopter of internet businesses and I think we'll get to hear a fair bit about that as we talk to him throughout today. His great love apart from business is sailing and so I think we'll probably hear a little bit about that as well. He's travelled quite extensively so perhaps that we'll touch on that too. For today, just because we're getting very close to our 50th episode Yay. of Inside Exec, Fuliana apparently gets to a turn to be in charge. I think once every 50 episodes is probably enough for any of us to have her in charge in this capacity. So she's looking pretty excited about it, so I shall <laughs> hand I over, I'll hand over <laughs> to her and we will see what she can manage when she's in charge. I still get to do the editing though. Thank you, Kim, and I'll be cheating from now on and pretending we've done another 50. Jamie, welcome. Thank um, you. I'm really delighted you're here because I think what you've done and what you're doing and willingness to share that will be really good for a lot of our listeners. It's my pleasure to be here. Now, I know that from the introduction and from knowing you before that, you went from working in corporate life, you didn't just change the size of the business and, and that, but you changed industries almost. You went from being in finance, IT, marketing. This is amazing and this is really good for people to know that it's doable. So can you share? I must admit, that I've had people talk to me about the way I've changed mm -hmm. industries since I have been working and I find mm -hmm. I usually get a bit stale about every 10 years. So mm -hmm. I always say I just change industries every 10 years. Um, I was exposed to the corporate world for a while and I enjoyed that. But I'm a little bit of a lone wolf, so mm -hmm. I went out, I wanted to be a consultant. I actually worked with a consultant while I was in a corporate environment. He introduced me to what was uh, what was out there. I didn't know there was such a thing as a consultant until that time. Mm -hmm. And I thought, I'll give this a try. I had some skills that I thought were valuable to other businesses apart from the one I was with, mm -hmm. and uh, and became a consultant. And that consultancy, was it in which part? Was it in IT? Was it in fine? The first one? The first Initially one. it was uh, information technologies. I'd done mm -hmm. some study on uh, programming and mm -hmm. in my role in construction I was working in the contracts division and that was yeah. at uh, the early uh, use of PCs and they needed people who could drive a PC effectively and, and get more out of them. Yeah. And I used my programming skills there to, mm -hmm. uh, to help refine certain business processes and improve on systems that are in place. Yep. From there I got uh, to the stage where I thought I was good enough to be able to sell those services outside of that business. So mm -hmm. it was initially a computing or an IT technology a consulting role. In the travel that you've, the journey I should say, mm -hmm. of your working life from that time, I have heard you say that you've now at a point where you are unemployable and I think that's a really interesting term to use. What makes you unemployable? That's a hard question to answer. I don't think it's a question of there's not things there that I can offer uh, mm -hmm. someone as an employee but I just think I've outgrown the role of an employee. Mm -hmm. Mm. I'd rather march to the beat of my own drum, mm. if I can put it that way, yeah. and uh, there's a freedom of thought and a freedom of uh, process and a freedom of doing things that I think are important that I can't get inside an organisation that I can get when I am the organisation. Yes. Mm. So it's a freedom thing. I think mm. we can either have security in our lives or we can have freedom, but to have one or the other you have to sacrifice one or the other. So I've gone the way of a bit more freedom. But it seemed to be working really well, not just for you, but for your clients. Because obviously your business has been successful, you've changed and you keep building. And I haven't seen any super heavy, heavy advertising on your part, which means that the methods that you're using and the reputation that you're building has been very, very effective. So how much value do you put on relationship building with clients? I tend to treat everyone the way I'd like to be treated. Mm -hmm. And I think in doing that, you build rapport with people. And, yeah. and in my marketing, I tell clients I deal with, 
that they have to get to know you and they know you, they'll learn to like you. When they know when they like you, they'll learn to trust you. And once they trust you, they'll spend their money with you. Yes. So even though I think there's an ulterior motive for those relationships to be built, I still mm -hmm. am very comfortable with being mm -hmm. the best person I can to the people I deal with for that's who I am. Yes. And so it's easy for me to do that. But I think it's a very good way to do business. I, I'm a big believer that people don't do business, don't uh, don't spend their money with businesses, they spend their money with other people and I like to do a personal relationship in the business I do with them. I believe you're right because you don't just do it to do business. I have looked on the internet and I found that, for example, when you were in the finance space, yes. you actually put some very valuable information there free of charge in relation to paying off your debt, educating people. <laughs> That's really important because, you know, some people can be in that situation and don't know where to go or can't afford it because they're sure. in debt. So that is, to me, is an investment in saying who you really are, in, in saying, I like to help people and I like to help them for helping them say, sure. not just to get business. No, I don't think doing it for the business reason is a good enough reason that will last the long term. I think if you do help people that way, as I may have uh, mentioned before, if you do help them that way, they do learn to trust you, and you, know, yes. you get you get an inside run with you know if they do uh, find you've been helpful without any immediate reward for your actions, they'll be more yes. inclined to come back to you for reasons of reciprocity, but mainly because they like and trust you. Yes. So even though, as I said, I'm comfortable with. <clears throat> Pardon me. I'm comfortable with treating people that way because that's who I am. Mm -hmm. It works a treat in a business mm -hmm. sense because yes. business is, is a person-to-person -person thing. It's a, it's a personal relationship and I, I get satisfaction out of it from a, from a personal point of view as well as a rewarding monetary point of view. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah it's, it's just an easy way. It, it's, it's the easiest way for me to be. Mm -hmm. So because that is what you're comfortable with with yourself? Absolutely. Yeah. So tell me a bit about what you're doing right now. At the moment, I'm doing a thing that I call marketing coaching. It's probably what would have been called a marketing consultant back in the day, but I don't mm -hmm. think people like consultants a whole lot, whereas I tend to see myself in a role where I'll come to a business that's either new or existing, and they'll either be doing some form of marketing that they're either not happy with or they think mm -hmm. that they can do better at, right. or maybe they haven't got any ideas about where to start. So mm -hmm. I try to come in and offer what I call a, a cradle to grave sort of opportunity for them where I can have a look at what they're doing, talk to them about what they do, mm -hmm. and try to uh, turn that into elements that we can market to people on, online. So once again, we can teach their clientele or their prospects, moreover, mm -hmm. what they do, what they're about, and educate them again to know, like and trust those businesses. And I think mm -hmm. it's a point of difference that I offer is that I tend to go for the information-based marketing, like the book I produced for the, mm -hmm. uh, the mortgage industry. I tend to write similar sorts of things for businesses mm -hmm. so they can deliver those results in advance. Mm -hmm. People read the, uh, the information that they need to know so they can make informed, intelligent decisions. That empowers them. When they feel empowered, mm -hmm. they'll come back to that business and hopefully do business with them. So that, that's the sort of thing I do, and that's, yeah. that's what I'm about in that regard. Great. So at this point, we better ask our standard question of guests, is what do you see as the difference or the similarities between mentoring, coaching, and having accountability partners? That's a good question. I, I see a mentor as someone who helps me with advice to be the person I need to be mm -hmm. to get where I want to go. I see a coach has someone who does a similar thing, but they teach me strategies that I can use mm -hmm. to get where I want to go. Yeah. And as far as an accountability partner, I think mm -hmm. both the mentor and coaches have a role here mm -hmm. in that they need to, especially you know, for a, an entrepreneur who doesn't have a, a system around them of people who are demanding things from them, when you're in charge of your own destiny, it can be easy to put things off. Yeah. But if you've got someone there who can remind you that you said you'll yeah. do that this week and not next week, you'll get to where you want to go faster. But yeah, I think the coach is just, here are the strategies, the mentor is, who do you have to be to get there? And I think that's what's the unique difference with you, is I think you're being three of those, those three roles Absolute in one. Absolute <laughs> <laughs> um, Because what, what happens is, is normally if you just get a marketing consultant, they're concentrating on the marketing strategy, in kind of isolation, sure. maybe. In your case, you're being the mentor, the coach, the accountability partner, and focusing on the main thing they came to ask you for, of course. 
And do you find those, the, the people that you help, are they small to medium businesses mainly? Usually small and medium businesses, mm. and I tend to fulfil a role of them having a, a marketing department or a, a marketer or a, right. as an employee. So I, I step into that role and, mm -hmm. and uh, try to shortcut the process for them. But a lot of people know what they are, know what they're about. They just need someone who can turn it into packages, if you like, that they can actually distribute to people out there so they can get some efficiency out of spending their dollars on marketing and on uh, yeah. you know, their, their sales, as it were, so they can get a maximum return out of it. I like that you tell and understand their business, which Absolutely. everybody claims to do. But at the moment, it seems like wherever I go, when it's talk about marketing, everybody thinks as long as they use the word digital, <laughs> then they, they're up to date. And I think sometimes people are using that word just to be in, rather than, okay, it is digital, but digital for a huge global organisation is a completely different offering to someone who's got... 200 employees and operate in one country or one state. So again, sometimes people are trying to sell one size fits all and I'm not hearing that here, which I'm happy No, not about. at all. One of the mainstays of the marketing I provide or the marketing services I provide is that the first thing you need to do in a business is you have to decide who your ideal clients are. Mm -hmm. And that's a form of niching that market rather than try to appeal to everyone and not appeal mm -hmm. to anyone. I say, well, let's, let's break that market down and see who, who do you want to have walk in the door on a regular basis? Yeah. Who's going to be the best person for you? Mm -hmm. And I couch it in terms of who can you be the hero to? Right. And if we can define that person you can be the hero to, mm -hmm. you'll do the best for them. Yeah. You'll get the most satisfaction out of that relationship between you because you'll be able to provide your best for them. Mm -hmm. And I think it's it's a... It's a bit of a cliche term, but it's a win-win situation. But I think okay. that's still achievable. But you have to realise who am I after, yeah. and once you know who they are, you can you can envisage their needs, their wants, their problems on a more granular level, and you can specify your marketing. So you say, right, I know what this person's problem is. I'm going to put my marketing material out there that answers the questions they're already asking themselves, yeah. and that'll get them on the phone or have them walk in the door, and then I can start the sales process and hopefully do business with them. Mm -hmm. So how do you actually determine who that ideal client is? I think if we looked at ourselves in, in our business roles or even in a corporate sense, if you're an, a team leader and you're servicing somewhere else in the organisation, how do you determine who that ideal client is that you want to keep returning all the time when really your focus is often that I want, I want to make some money and I want, or I want to be successful for the organisation, so I want to have everyone I possibly can take on this service or take on this activity or this product. How do you identify that entity? Identific identification is, is, is probably the hardest part, and there's a lot of tools you can use to help you do that. One of the things I often think about when I'm trying to find a, a particular client or prospect for a, a, uh, for a particular market, I'll, I'll try to imagine who's going to walk in this door and talk to me about this business. I know the services that are on offer and I try to position myself, who is going to come in this door and who will be the ideal person who will want these services. And I try to make it personal. I say, is this man a woman? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's better that. Is this, is this a man? Is it a woman? Yes. Are they this level of education? Do they have children? Are they yes. $100,000 a year? Whatever it may mm -hmm. be. And I try to get it down to that. I can mentally have someone sit down in front of me and say, okay, this is the sort of person I want. And mm -hmm. from there, I try to extrapolate that out and say, this is the sort of demographic they fall into. Right. And once I've got that sort of broad brush, I can start to market to that particular demographic. And then the people who reply to the sort of ads we put out there, the fish who nibble on that bait we've put out there, mm -hmm. they select themselves. And that narrows that again. And then we can review right. the people who have responded and that narrows that, that niche down a bit further so we can a bit more fine-tune what goes on from mm -hmm. that stage. So it's an ongoing process of back and forth and refining. Yeah refining as you go. But yeah, it's very, very difficult, but the first stage in getting that right is understanding that's what you want to do in the first place, rather than yeah. say, I want to sell these widgets to everyone. everyone. Mm. But that's just wrong. Yeah. It just doesn't work. As part of that identification process, it could lead you to maybe saying, I don't think we're the right mix. Could you end up that way? Absolutely. Yeah. And, and I think, very back to your um, point, Kim, a lot of people would feel wrong in a business because 
on the money side, they, they can't say no to someone because that's not the right fit or they can't provide the service the way you want to provide it and the way you want to help your client. So they mistakenly take on it because it is a business. So what you're saying is you go through that identification to try and get so that you can get the best you can give to this particular client and if that wasn't going to work for whatever reason because the client maybe have different values maybe the client have different work ethics sure. and that's not what you want to be part of no. um, then you will say look I'm, I'm sorry maybe you want to find someone who provided that way um, we work on this sort of way yes so have you ever turned down a client yes I have yeah. the way I look at it personally is there's only so much I can do in a day Yes. And in those hours I spend every day, I can yeah. either be picking up okay. pennies or I can be picking up gold nuggets by working with the right people. Yeah. So by sacrificing time I could be mm -hmm. spending with the ideal client by someone yes. who might maybe less than ideal, mm -hmm. I'm not only dis giving myself a disservice, I'm yeah. not offering what I have to mm -hmm. the people who really need it. Once again, it falls back to win-win. By finding a right fit with, mm -hmm. with your prospects or with your clients, that gets the most out of you personally and it gets mm. the best uh, solution for the client as well. So it's just yes. a good thing. And if you have to say no, I think it's very hard in the beginning when starting yeah. out because every client looks like a good client. Yes. But it's like when you're thumbing a ride. Every car looks like a good car, but not all of them you want to be yeah. picked up by. Definitely. So. The other thing is that I think it's implied in that is the way you're talking, you defined or you identified for yourself that you want to be working like you are working now so on your own with a business and if you get stale after 10 years you change direction but you don't change you have not changed the direction of saying well there's only so many hours in the day so I will employ you haven't done that and that's a very very good strength because a lot of people will get persuaded to go in a direction by saying I want to work only 50% of the time or three days a week and they end up doing seven because they can't help themselves or start off by being the one and only and then deciding oh it's getting too big and you get on the adrenaline and all of that and you start building it and before you know it it's not what you wanted anyway. That's a really big deal and you're stuck to that. It's been how long now? Probably uh, Over, years, Yeah, there you go. <laughs> That, thank you for reminding me. <laughs> yeah, I really oh, well, appreciate well, that. Thank uh, you. Uh, yes, uh, yes. Reminding you is by reminding me. <laughs> <laughs> but it is, it is a congratulations point thank because you. it is, it is hard to do. I know that I make commitment to what I want, and I know what I want, and and I, I you know, move away from it every now and again. So to, to do that, that's really good. We're going to take a break there in our discussion with entrepreneur and marketing coach Jamie Wadley. Join us again for part two of our discussions with Jamie. I'm Kim Bailey, she's Fuliana Osborne and this is Inside Exec.